Hey there, I'm Chris Bonetti, host of the Smart Author Podcast. In this episode, I speak with Michelle Cunningham and we discussed how she used organic video to stand out in a crowded niche and sell a ton of books. Some of the main topics we will be covering today include what you can do to stand out in a crowded market, how video skyrockets Michelle's authority, influence and business, and what Michelle would do if she had to build her brand again from scratch today. At the end of this episode, please make sure you visit our website where you can find the show notes plus all the links mentioned with Michelle. And if you're enjoying this episode, please make sure you subscribe so you're always the first to know when a new episode is released. And if you're struggling with book sales, head over to smartauthormedia.com forward slash audit to get a free audit and a clear plan to get your book sales back on track. Now let's head over to this awesome interview. Hey, Smart Authors, welcome back to another episode. Today, I'm joined by the awesome Michelle Cunningham. Michelle, how are you? I'm so good. It's so good to be here. It's very exciting. (laughs) Yes, thank you for taking the time. And, uh, you know, we just mentioned we're pretty much in opposite time zones. So it's like, it's late for Michelle, it's early for me. I'm just so glad that we're able to work it out. (laughs) Yeah, it's crazy. Literally 12 hours apart, 6.30, 6.30. It's crazy. (laughs) Michelle, can you give everyone a bit of a uh, deep dive into your background and and how you got from you know where you began to like where you are now because obviously that's a pretty big transition to you know being successful in network marketing and then also building a really successful personal brand now um, I'd love to hear your story and and I'm sure it'd be very impactful for everyone else who's listening yeah I mean I think it's always great when someone I don't know when, for me at least when you meet someone successful you're like that's the backstory. And it's always great when it's really messy. So that's the good news about me is it's pretty messy. <laughs> I grew up incredibly poor. My mom was a single mom. Uh, so I come from basically no money. My parents divorced when I was six. And so I was always the, the poor kid who wanted to afford things like the big apples at the grocery store and like Pantene shampoo, which was like a $3 shampoo. So just to put it in perspective, like growing up, I just was different than those around me because we just didn't have money. We were the low class kids in a middle class neighborhood. And so I just remember feeling like, man, those kids have no idea how lucky they are to get a new backpack or to like have new clothes. And so, um, so I came from a place of just being really humble beginnings for sure. And paid my way through college, uh, working a bunch of jobs in high school, went to college, like the normal kids. I went away to campus, but I was a kid there that had to pay for college. Unlike the other kids. So on the weekends, I worked 40 hours a week as a waitress at Applebee's (laughs) and, um, paid my way through college. And, you know, looking back, I'm super thankful for all of that what what at the time felt like struggle because it made me just realize that if, if we want anything in this world, we can get it by hustling. And, and that's been my whole life. I've just hustled for anything that I've wanted. There's been no handouts. There's no wealthy family that's going to pass me on money. It's all just like I had to get to work. And so I remember being 23 years old, my actually was 22 when it happened, but one of my buddies right when I was graduating college was like, it's impossible to get a job as a pharmaceutical sales rep. So I land. So I'm like, well, then fine. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to become a pharma rep. So I did. I learned how to become one. I studied it, read a book about it, landed the job with a top pharmaceutical company and then got there and was like, so bored. I'm like, what am I doing here? It's so boring. We call on doctors. I drive in a company car. This is stupid. Uh, But I acted like I did. I loved it, but I didn't. And at the time, my coworker's wife was selling makeup and beauty products on the side while she worked this full-time job. And I was like, just looking for more because I was I honestly believe if you're in a job and you feel like, what am I doing here? I believe you are an entrepreneur stuck at a nine to five and you need to get out. Right. And that was me. I was like, I feel like there's more to life. And if you feel that, that's probably because you need to be an entrepreneur. So I ended up going to a meeting with her and hearing about ooh, selling beauty and skincare. And I remember like looking at the ladies in the room and being like, this one lady was like, I make six figures a year. I'm like working from home. And this lady's like, I just earned a free car. And I'm like working from home. And this lady's like, I'm a millionaire. I'm like, you knew what this is. Is this real? Like, and I remember looking around being like, this is a scam or something, but I love it. You know? So I go home and I tell my mom and she's like, yeah, baby, that is a scam. You got to be careful. You know, network marketing is not good. So I'm like not joining right after talking to my mom. But then like a few days later, I'm like, I'm 23. I don't need to listen to my mom anymore. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go out on a limb on this one. My mom loves a nine to five sitting, working at computers all day. I don't like, there's nothing about that that excites me. So I was like, 
you know what? I'm going to do this. So I signed up. I didn't tell her <laughs> and uh, ordered my inventory for this network marketing company and got started, but didn't realize, oh my gosh, I have to talk to people. <laughs> and for the next six years, I didn't talk to people. 23 to 29, I was stuck as a network marketer. And it wasn't until I was 29 years old, we're still stayed in a safe corporate job, bored out of my mind. 29 years old, I'm like, you know what? I need to make a change. And I found a lady that worked for the same company. And she was like the person that changed everything for me. I met her. She showed me the ropes. She said, I know you're an introvert. I'm going to show you how I do this. I'm going to show you how I built my business without walking up to people. I'm going to show you how to sell without approaching strangers, like the whole thing. And sure enough, after meeting her six months later, I went from zero team members to 50 team members. I went from zero customers to hundreds of customers. And so what she taught me in that six months changed my life forever. I had been stuck in that company for six years and then boom, we had like a skyrocket thing. And I'm like, sweet, but what she taught me, I will teach others. And so I did, I taught it to my team and they had success. I raised 20 people up to become top leaders in the company. And we had boatloads of success. I was a consistent six figure per year earner. But while I was doing that, I was like, you know what? Like I was stuck for so long because I couldn't figure out what to do and what to say. I'm going to start sharing it on YouTube. So that's what I did. As I was having success, I was sharing it on YouTube. And little did I know that that simple action of like putting out free information to help others would completely change the trajectory of my life and my business. But it did. And that was the, the one thing, um, sharing free information it's crazy what that can do for your life. So that was, that was kind of my start of my story. Mm. I feel like that's so, um, so true. Like, especially in a market where there's so many people who aren't getting anywhere and everyone's trying to like hide it and make it secret. And like, there's a lot of ambiguity around like how you can actually have success and what the actual strategies are for doing that. And here's Michelle, like, Here's YouTube, <laughs> all for free. <laughs> go, go get it. <laughs> yeah. And, and what I didn't realize about that was just by sharing helpful information, it was started to attract people to me that were watching my strategy over a few years. And they would start to reach out like a few months in, a year later. I like your strategy. I like you. I want to join your team. Or I like you. Can I buy products from you? Or uh, eventually I, I started getting calls from uh, CEOs of companies asking if I could come speak. And they were like, bring along your training program. And I'm like, whoa, I don't have one, but I'll make one. <laughs> and so I made a training CD training program. I remember bringing it to this event. And that is really what started my journey with my online brand becoming, instead of just free stuff, it became a, a profitable venture mm. with those CDs. That, that was the first product I ever offered, which is funny. So, awesome. <laughs> um, so with your success in network marketing, if you were to do it again, like what would you how would you do it again? Cause like, obviously you, you spent nine or sorry, six years of wait, was it nine or six? I'm six kidding. years stuck. Yeah. 23 yeah. to 29, I was stuck. And then I had nine years of success. Yeah. Um, so go ahead with your question. Yeah. So if you were to do like start again with your business in, in that space, would you do uh, something different? Like if you didn't have that mentor, like what would you do now? to set yourself up for success again, like you have in the past? Yeah. So I think for me, like those first six years, why I stayed stuck was that I would go to company events and I would look on stage and they'd be like, the top leaders would be up there. They're like, you can do it. Just believe in your heart. Believe. I'm like, but what? <laughs> That's not helpful. Like, what, do, what are you saying? How are you booking the people? Mm -hmm. Right. And so for me, and I think for a lot of people, we stay stuck because we get some motivation, but we don't get the how to. And so that's the stuff that I share. And that's the stuff that changed the game for me was when I went to a training meeting and the lady's like, here's everything to say at your appointment. Here's how to get leads. Here's how to generate sales. Here's how to book the appointment. Here's how to close them. Like she gave me this like thing. And I was like, thank you, gold. Okay. I have the gold. And once I had the gold, I was like, okay, no more excuses, right? Mm -hmm. And so now today, what I do is I give people the gold so that you have no more excuses. Like, here's everything. So now if you're not taking action, like you have everything you need. So I take away that piece of it for, for people because that for me was the biggest thing. Yeah. So I just needed the, the guidebook of what to say. Sure, yeah. And so like, how did the book come around then? And can you tell everyone a little bit about why you wrote that? Yeah. So, um, you know, I first started selling a CD, which was how to generate leads 
sales and uh, recruits, three different CDs. And we started to sell that with Facebook ads and lots of people started to buy them. And then I launched another course called Mastering the Live, showing people how to host profitable Facebook live parties. And that blew up in a weekend. We did $52,000 in sales. And I'm like, whoa, that was crazy. Awesome. Um, and, and I started to realize like, whoa, that's like insane, right? But when I, what I learned about having a book was not only can you deliver your whole message and help a ton of people and like give them your entire game plan, right? Which is like everything I do is like, how can we like totally over deliver and give people tons of value that's going to change their business? Not only is it that, but a book is a massive lead magnet into your ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And like, that was the one little piece I just needed to hear that I was like, oh, like, okay, okay. So if you read my book, right? Like many people that have a brand, (laughs) there's usually a little link in there that's like, hey, if you want my free thing, that's really super awesome that you like will die if you don't have. (laughs) <laughs> right. Which mine is like my magical scripts. And there's a bunch of little links in there, but not too many. Some people overdo it. And there's just a few in there, but those are links back into my online ecosystem, which gets people on my email list, which allows me to stay in communication with people, which is how I've massively grown an email list, which is what has generated um, millions and millions of dollars in revenue. And so, you know, and I share that with people because I'm like, you don't understand a book is a really, really good idea. <laughs> right. For like all those reasons crazy so is that like what what are the 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 biggest strategies for you to get the book out to people do you 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 do do facebook ads obviously you've had experience with that in the past with your digital products do you just like rely on amazon and the algorithm do you try to do anything sponsored on amazon i'm sure youtube videos would also be a fantastic way to promote your book What, what are your methods yeah. So, I mean, my, I just self-published my book. I I'm not like an official author, but now I am because I wrote a book and it became an international bestseller and it has five stars, which I'm like, Whoa, that's so crazy. So now I actually feel like an author, but I give everyone permission. Who's not an author to write a book. And the best part is I wrote it in four days at a hotel. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. So that's important because anyone can write a book, but, uh, for marketing it, I just published it on Amazon, right? I found an editor and I found it someone to make it look formatted and pretty. And then I, hired someone on 99 designs to make it really pretty. And then I put it on Amazon and I didn't really know what I was doing, uh, but it hit bestseller list when I accidentally released it like two weeks before it was supposed to release. (laughs) I messed up the whole thing. That was so fantastic. It didn't matter. The thing went bestseller by accident. Um, Again, you know, I always tell people it doesn't have to be perfect. We just got to get things done here. Let's just keep moving. So I get the book out there. And then now I just, just talk about it on my YouTube videos. I'll occasionally drop it or when I run a boot camp, I do boot camps several times throughout the years for network marketers where they get a whole workbook with all my scripts and all my strategies. And in that, I might say, hey, I'm giving away a copy of my book. Or if I do a lot, hey, I'm giving away a copy of my book. And so book sales uh, just always are happening from all the stuff that I'm doing, um, reels and videos. And I try to post several videos a week, whether it be short videos, reels, um, YouTube shorts. I do uh, Facebook lives. I do Facebook short, uh, the reels on Facebook. So just all of that noise just out there. And then you get people that get my book and they're like, well, I love it. And they tag me. So I just reshare it. And then I, in the beginning I was on, I would just reach out to podcast hosts and just say, Hey, I just wrote a new book. I was wondering if you ever need guests, I would love to be on your show. Cause I think you're really awesome. And they all said, yes, nobody said no. And I was like, that was the craziest thing ever to me. So, um, I guess it just goes to show like the worst people can say is no, but most of the podcast people don't say no, which is pretty awesome. Yeah. And I actually, um, I also think that when podcasters and hosts like reach out to people like yourself, like most of the time, it's like, if you got a podcast, cool. Like I'd love to be on it. And and I I love that dynamic. Like everyone's so open to and willing to, um, to come on and give value in their own way. Yep. Totally. Yeah. That's what's so cool about it. The whole creator, you know, everyone who's a creator online, very like welcoming and, um, it's just, it's, it's an amazing thing. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you released the book, how did that impact your business? Did you find that you like drastically grew your email list? Did did you see that happen right away? Did it take a little bit of time for that to kind of roll in? Um, You know, what, what has it done to help increase your, your business in, in general? Yeah, it's a great question. I think that for me, the biggest thing was it's an instant credibility booster. Like, for some reason, when it's like, 
oh, we have Michelle Cunningham, the international best-selling author of Do It Anyway, Girl, which I'm like, just a regular person that wrote a book. I'm just, you know what I mean? Like, that's what I say in my head. And that's what I give everyone permission to do is write a book. <laughs> but like, there's suddenly something that happens and I get asked to speak on summits and stages now. And then they're like, can you send your book in to be in the swag bag for all the attendees for the event? And I'm like, yes, absolutely. <laughs> now, <laughs> which is crazy to me. The other cool thing is like, mostly when you speak at an event, they will say, you can't mention your freebie on stage or anything, but we'll give your book to the entire audience. I'm like, well, that happens to be a big freebie. Do you know what I'm saying? So like, it's crazy, but, but it is, people are like, wow, you are an author. And just for that reason alone, I think everyone should write a book. Like just write a book for like, that's so cool that suddenly, I don't know, your value goes up to the world. And yet you're like, but the, I'm the same person just happened to write about what I was doing. So it's pretty crazy, pretty awesome. And do, do you find that there's been some good opportunities that have come from that authority status, from being an author who is internationally international and also a bestseller? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I totally. And, and I don't know if it's totally like the book that we can say, it's hard to measure that exactly. But like, I have been on stages with people I only have admired from a distance and I'm like, whoa, that's so crazy. Right. Like, I'm just, this is so crazy that I'm here, but you know, I, I, that book has done such a huge, huge thing for, for my business and for my credibility. And, um, and, and it's just a cool way to be able to connect with other creators. Other people who have a book are really open to like being in your book, right. Or putting a testimonial for your book or one of my biggest mentors in the whole world um, that I bought her book, never, ever talked to her because she's such a big deal. Her name is Sarah Robbins. She's a huge network marketer, but a lot of her strategies I learned in her book um, changed my business forever. And I wrote about them in my book. And then I asked her to write the forward for my book uh -huh. and she said, yes. And then I fell over dead because I'm like, that was so cool. So like, um, it's just crazy because having a book gets you connected to so many like next level people, yeah. uh, which is really a cool thing. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. It's like the, the synergy between people and like the up leveling it, you know, you guys can just like, okay. So an example, as I have stepped into this author and book marketing industry, it's like, I've just been getting connected with people who are better and better and better, <laughs> like in the space, like bigger and bigger marketers, bigger and bigger authors. Like after this, I'm inter interviewing Bob Berg, which, um, you know, massive author, uh, sold over yeah. a million copies of his book. So it's just yeah. cool. Cause like, once you sort of get your foot in the door and you get well known for something that you're doing, the opportunities open up where you can get connected with more and more people who are more and more awesome, you know, in their own respect. Um, and I just love that about any kind of space that you step into and, and jump head first that. Yep. I agree. Yeah. It's, it's so cool. So yeah, books are highly recommended. <laughs> like, I just think everyone should have a book and I want to write another book. Like now I'm like, Ooh, this is so fun. And the thing makes money. It's not even like you make money with the book too. So I'm like, this is only a good idea. <laughs> you have your book with you. Yeah. It's right behind me. See it. Let me get it. Oh, there it is. Yep. There it is. Right. Do it anyway, girl. <laughs> And uh, is this, is the book written for network marketers specifically? Yeah, it's a playful, simple, unique guide to achieving success in network marketing. Cool. So yeah. And my next book's going to be, you are a million dollar brand. So I'm going to teach people how to just be authentically yourself and build a million dollar brand online and shock Love people. <laughs> and, um, and your book cover is so awesome as well. <laughs> 99 yeah, Designs thanks. did a fantastic job. <laughs> I went back and forth. You should have seen the original. I was like, that's terrible. No, nope, no, no. <laughs> we cannot have that. Be I wanted it to look like, like I just tell people, look at like what Tony Robbins, look what Oprah does. Look at like the really big people and make yours look kind of like theirs. Even mm -hmm. if you're not them, I don't care. You can just still make it look like theirs. So that's as close as we could get. <laughs> but yeah. I love how it came out. Cool. Well, um, yeah, I totally agree. Like so many self-published authors just <laughs> like throw anything up and it's like, you won't yeah. believe how, much that actually impacts the sale because uh, people do judge a book by its cover. Yeah, <laughs> it's very important. The look of your book. 
Awesome. Well, uh, thank you so much for your time today, Michelle. It's been an awesome uh, pleasure getting to to know your story a little bit more and also, you know, some of the backgrounds to, to book and your authority and, and success online. Um, is there anywhere that you would like to send people who are listening to this episode, any specific resources or anything like that? Yeah. So my website's michellecunningham.com. And if you head there, there's lots of different links to all the free stuff that I have online. So you can find lots of good stuff. Awesome. Well, I'll make sure that's linked up in the uh, show notes. And I also will link up Michelle's YouTube because there's, <laughs> there's a ton of awesome stuff on there. Um, I did a bit of a deep dive yesterday into all, <laughs> all of her videos. And even uh, there's one specific on like how to record a video with your iPhone. And <laughs> it's, um, it's pretty fun. So I'll make sure that's linked up as well. Awesome. Cool. cool. Well, thanks for having me on, Chris. You're awesome. I appreciate it. No, thank you again. Damn, what an awesome episode. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing on your podcast platform of choice so you get notified every single time a new episode releases. And if you're struggling with your book sales, head over to smartauthormedia.com forward slash audit to get a free audit of your book sales to see where we can help you bridge the gap between not many sales to a lot of sales. <laughs> It's a free resource call that we have together where I give you some clear action steps that you can take to take your stuff from broken to selling. I'll see you over there. Thanks again for listening.